All right, this is Mask Pro from On One Software, and I'm just going to give a quick overview of how the program works and how you can uh, pretty easily and effectively remove an object from a background in Photoshop uh, if that's what you need to do. It, it can be used to uh, create objects to drop into uh, pamphlets or ads or or anything like that. Or if you can, if you want to replace the background with something else, that you know, there's unlimited uses for for masking in Photoshop and uh, Mask Pro just makes it a lot easier. So, uh, what you do is you just take your uh, your image here. This is a, a random flower that my wife took a picture of while we were uh, on vacation in Hawaii. And uh, with that image selected, you'll just come up here to Mask Pro, and I'll double click that to uh, oops, double click it to launch it. <clears throat> and there you go. This is the uh, image that we're going to be working with and this is the interface you have your toolbar right here um, you have some mask pro tips that are always available and you can uh, watch short movies here I'm sorry didn't mean to go out of it there I'm trying to bring my options over here um, mask pro kinda works around these these keep and drop colors right here and I'm gonna reset this here you don't have to do this every time, but uh, uh, this is what it will look like when you go into the image for the first time. So <clears throat> what you uh, what you want to do is you want to select colors from the background that you want to drop and then select colors from your subject that you want to keep. And then Mask Pro is going to uh, take its magic brush icon and calculate which images to drop and which ones to leave, and it's going to make a selection from that. And that's how it's kind of different from the way that Photoshop's masking tools work. So um, you have these eyedroppers here. Anything that's green is uh, keep. Anything that's red is drop. So what I'll do is grab the uh, eyedropper. And it says right here it's the keep eyedropper. <clears throat> and I'm just going to take a few selections from this flower. And uh, I want to make sure I have white selected. You'll see it pop up over here. Um, maybe get some shades where it kind of changes over to yellow here make sure I have the yellow selected you can see these subtle changes in color and um, <clears throat> you know I've noticed the more that you select the longer it's going to take for the brush to load so I try to keep it fairly uh, simple and if I notice that the mask starts uh, degrading in quality I'll add some colors or, or take some away or start over with the selection process it just depends so um, next I'm going to uh, take my drop tool, <clears throat> my drop eyedropper, and excuse my cough, I'm just getting over a cold. So um, now I'm going to go through these leaves in the background and just select a few colors in there. I noticed uh, that there's you know quite a few different colors in that green, and I want to make sure I capture them all from dark to light. <clears throat> Get this brown over here, this green here. <clears throat> Alright, and and that's really pretty much as easy as it is. Uh, it, it, you know, once you figure out what the how the program works and what these tools are, that's all you really need to know. And uh, next you're going to grab this uh, tool here, it's called the Magic Brush. And I like to just paint with a pretty big uh, and broad brush just to save time because it makes a bigger selection around the flower. And if it doesn't work, then I'll make adjustments from there. But uh, when I hit this, when I press this brush down, it should just start creating a selection. So uh, here we go. And there you go. It's uh, you can see that it's taking the green and uh, all the colors that I selected to drop away, and it's keeping everything in the flower uh, because I selected those colors. And it's not just keeping those colors that I selected. It's uh, you know it's using algorithms to choose colors like it and uh, it's trying to intuitively um, you know decide which colors to keep and which ones to get rid of and depending on your background and what you're trying to remove uh, this program isn't always perfect sometimes it'll mess up because it you know it is just algorithms and um, it, it can do everything for you every single time the, the way that you intended it to so that's just something that you kind of have to accept with any program like this and just take it for what it is um, with this it's working extremely well and uh, I haven't had to 
really make any adjustments yet. So I think that'll work for us. Um, once you have your initial mask done, you can come down here and choose some uh, different background options. You know, this is the mask, and you can see around this area here that it, it did uh, leave some artifacts behind there. And there's a couple ways to get rid of that. Uh, there's this uh, magic paint bucket tool, or magic fill, I'm sorry. You can use that to just go over it, and, you know, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, let's see here. Oh, sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, and there you go, it's not going to work right here. So I'm going to use my uh, just brush tool and get a smaller brush size here. And I'm going to switch this over to uh, drop and just kind of paint over that, get in pretty close there. You can adjust the, uh, you know, the feather of the brush if you want. Drop this over here. There's a little artifact there. <clears throat> Let's go back to the uh, transparent view. And uh, next what I'm going to do is just attempt to remove this entire background. And what I'll use is the uh, magic wand here. And I'm just going to click in the background and it's going to crunch through the numbers and the colors that I selected. And, and there you go. And uh, as you can see, there's still some uh, artifacts here that it left behind. And, and that's a quick fix. You can use any of these tools here to go in and uh, you know grab your brush here and get a pretty big one there and just paint away all those artifacts. You can see this is a pretty quick process. <clears throat> that looks pretty good right there, I think. All right, and once you're done, you just hit Save, Apply. And you can see my result right here. If I turn off my uh, initial layer here, this is the Mask Pro result. And I can uh, zoom in and look at my edges here, and everything looks good. You can see some pixelation there. That's just because I'm using a smaller file size just for speed here. And um, if you want to check the quality of the mask, you can you know create a... A layer here. I meant to call that black. Grab my uh, paint bucket, paint with black, and fill that in. <clears throat> and there you go. You can see the edges look good. Everything's pretty crisp. I can uh, go back here and select this and you know move it around. I know the edge is cut off here, but resize it. And that's what uh, that's what Mask Pro does.